All right. Welcome, 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 students. Welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the 2013 Cape Mathematics paper. And before we begin, I just want to mention that you shouldn't look at previous past papers from 2004 to 2012 because they were using a different syllabus at that time and the syllabus changed in 2013. And so there will be no solution for 2004 to 2012 because the syllabus changed. All right, so stuff like complex numbers and all of those stuff. They moved it from module three to module one, etc. So focus on 2013 to 2020. All right, let's get it. So question one says, calculate the gradient of the curve ln x square y. So let's do that. That's question one. So you have ln x square y. minus sine y and this is equal to 3x minus 2y and they want the gradient so let's do this question so first thing is i know that with log functions i can separate them so i can separate this as ln x squared minus ln x squared plus ln y. I might ask, sir, why would you want to separate them? I want to separate them so I don't have to use product. I don't have to use composite rule to differentiate this. I can just differentiate it normally. Then I differentiate sine. Well, I don't start differentiate yet. So I just write minus sine y. That's equal to 3x minus 2y. So all I did was use laws of logarithms to rewrite ln x square y as ln x square plus ln y. Now, when I have this now, I can differentiate now. So now I'm going to differentiate both sides. So I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. All right, d by dx. So when I differentiate both sides with respect to x, to differentiate ln x squared, I carry down the power. So I get two ln x. I subtract one from the power and multiply it by the differential of inside. Carry down the power, subtract one from the power. Or if you don't want to look at it that way, think of it as two ln x. To differentiate two ln x, when you differentiate ln x, you get one over x. All right, so let's do it that way. Instead of writing it as ln x squared, think of it as two ln x. And to differentiate two ln x, you just differentiate ln x. So when you differentiate ln x, you get one over x. So it becomes two over x. Plus, when you differentiate ln y, you get one over y, but then you multiply it by dy by dx. In that case, I'm gonna write y prime minus when you differentiate sine y you get cosine y but then you multiply it by what by dy by dx which is y prime and that's equal to when you differentiate 3x you get 3 minus when you differentiate 2y you get 2y prime so what you're going to do now is group everything with dy by dx on one side so Let's go ahead and do that. All right. Um, let's let's bring everything with y prime on this side. So we're gonna have one over y times y prime. Then we're gonna have minus cosine y times y prime. Then we're gonna have plus two y prime, and that's gonna be equal to bring everything else to the other side. So we have, that looks like three minus two over X. Okay, nice. So all we're gonna do now is factor out Y prime. So we're gonna factor out Y prime, which is dy by dx. Factoring out Y prime, we get one over Y minus 
the cosine of y plus two. And that is equal to three minus two over x. Okay, nice. So all we have to do now is divide both sides by one over y minus cos y plus two. So when we divide both sides by that, we're gonna get that y prime, also known as dy by dx, is equal to three minus two over x, all being divided by one over y minus cos y plus two. Nice, but we have to remember what the question had asked us. The question had asked us for dy by dx, I believe when x is, when x is one and y is zero. So we need to find dy by dx at the point one zero. So we're gonna substitute x as one and y as zero. Substituting x as one, we're gonna get that dy by dx or y prime is equal to, plugging in one right here, we get three minus two, which is one over, plugging in y as zero, one over zero, one over zero is a big number, that's, that's infinity, all right? So we're gonna write one over zero, and the cosine of zero, and the cos of zero, what is the cos of zero? I believe the cos of zero is one, so the cos of zero is one plus two. Now again, one over zero is infinity and one over infinity is zero. And so what we're gonna get then is dy by dx or y prime is equal to zero. All right, why? Because it's one, it's approximately equal to one over infinity and one over infinity is equal to zero. And so the gradient at one zero is zero. So you can give them a concluding statement. That is the gradient is zero at the point one zero. Gradient is zero. So if the gradient is zero, we know at one zero it's a stationary point. Nice. Now let's look at the second part of the question, question 1b. Question 1b, this is a partial derivative question. It gives us a function f of x, y, z, and it tells us that f is equal to 3y z squared minus e to the 4x and e to the 4x is being multiplied by the cosine of 4z. Minus 4. And they tell us that this function is also equal to 0, which I think that part is irrelevant, that it's equal to 0. But nonetheless, let's see what they're asking. They said, given that dou z by dou y is equal to the minus dou f by dou y over dou f by dou z, determine dou z by dou y in terms of x, y, and z. So no problem with doing this question. So they give us what is dou z, it is dou f by dou y over dou f by dou z. So first we need to find this dou f by dou y. Let's find that first. So we need to find dou f by dou y. To find dou f by dou y, we think of everything else as a constant, all right? So z squared here is like a constant. And so differentiating this, what we're gonna get is we're differentiating with respect to y. So it's gonna become three z squared because z, z squared is a constant now. now Oh, something was missing out of the question. 
missed out something out of the question. I was like, why it looks so short? It was e to the 4x times cosine z minus 3y squared minus 4. Now the question is finished. So differentiate this part. Now let's differentiate this now. Now differentiating this with respect to y is 0, because that's just a constant. So you get minus 0. Then you have 3y squared. You carry down the power and you subtract one from the power. So do f by do y is 3 z squared minus 6. Now next thing we need to find is we need to find do f by do z. We need to find do f by do z. So to find do f by do z, we're going to differentiate with respect to z. All right. So do f by do z, differentiating with respect to z, we carry down the power to get so this becomes six y and six y z. We carry down the power and subtract one from the power. Now, e to the four x is a constant, so it's going to be minus. When you differentiate cosine, you get minus sine, and you multiply it by the derivative of cos 4z. When you differentiate cos 4z, you will get minus 4 sine 4z. So that's going to be called minus and minus, make it be plus. So it's going to be plus 4 e to the 4x times the sine of 4z. That's it, that's dou f by dou z. Now you cannot differentiate this with respect to z or you get zero. So now we can go ahead and write down what is dou f by, what was that? Dou f by, well, dou z by dou y, that is. We can now find dou z by dou y. Dou z, by dou y is equal to minus dou f by dou y, minus dou f by dou y is going to be 6y minus 3z squared divided by dou f by dou z. Dou f by dou z, it is 6yz plus 4e to the 4x times the sine of 4z. That's dou z by dou y. Nice and easy, soft. All right, so this is that question, soft, with a capital T. Let's look at the next part of the question. The next part of the question says, using De Marvel's theorem, we want to prove that the cosine of five theta is equal to 16 cos to the five theta minus 20 cos cube theta plus five cos theta. So we want to use De Marvel's theorem. So this was part B.